this for us. Uh, I'm going to call up the governor's uh, chief of policy, Aaron Hames, to introduce our speaker, and he will frame that for us, and then we'll get to the panel. Aaron. Thank you all very much for being here today to, to focus on um, an extremely important topic um, for our state and, and for our nation. Um, Complete College America, as some of you may know, is something that Georgia is currently a part of. Um, and it is really, as Steve said, changed our focus from college access to focusing on college completion. Um, we know that the, the majority uh, of our young people are going to need some type of post-secondary credential. Whether that's coming from the technical college system or that's coming from the university system, they're going to need a post-secondary credential in order to um, get a job that meets the demands of the 21st century and so that they can provide for their families. Um, and so we're moving that conversation to talking about college access to talking about college completion. Um, obviously in Georgia we've had some, some real benefits when it comes to college access um, through the Hope Scholarship, uh, most importantly. And um, this legislative session we've looked at revisions to the Hope Scholarship to ensure that for future generations of Georgia, um, that's still a promise. The Hope Scholarship is still a promise for them as it is for our earliest learners um, in pre-K, um, where, where that early learning really begins. Um, and so we have been excited, we have been excited to be a part of Complete College America, and we are also going through the process now of applying for the Complete College America Challenge Grant, um, where 10 states will be awarded a million dollars um, to really focus their efforts on one of four areas uh, within the Complete College America agenda. Um, so ranging from remediation to time to degree, um, really looking at performance funding. Um, Tennessee, where, where Will has um, been in previous years, has really led the way at their higher ed level in focusing their funding formula, not on enrollment, but actually focusing their, their formula on completion. And institutions actually gain uh, dollars, state dollars for their higher education institutions based on completion rather than just students who are enrolled. And so, um, we'll certainly be taking a close look at what Tennessee has done as, as well as other states as we move forward. Uh, it's an honor to, to get to introduce Will to you this morning. Um, you know, there is a nationally a state-led movement that has so much momentum right now in education, and there's a lot of excitement among those of us who, who have the privilege of, of working to improve educational outcomes for students across this country. Um, and through Race to the Top, through Complete College America, um, and all of, all of this great work with the Common Core State Standards that states are, are doing right now, Will's name is one that often comes up there. He um, is formerly with Governor Bredesen of Tennessee, um, and of course they were the first Race to the Top winner. Um, and we've um, had a great sharing with Tennessee. Um, there are some areas where they're ahead of Georgia, um, some areas, and there's some, there are other areas where Georgia is ahead of Tennessee from a policy standpoint. And so we've made trips to Nashville to sit down with their team in Tennessee, and it's been a great shared experience. And so I've personally um, very much enjoyed getting to know Will, and I know he's going to do a great job laying the framework this morning. So, Will, thank you. You know, the, the governors and the people who support the work um, that they do, and I, and I would add the people who are in the classroom, the teachers and leaders really in the schools really have some of the toughest jobs in, in uh, government these days. It's, it's a grind, and we're lucky to, to, to have people who are willing to give themselves to public service, particularly given all the things that we're facing in budgets and, and so forth. Um, this is a pretty amazing room. It's a pretty daunting setup. It kind of feels like the United Nations is kind of, kind of deal. So, so I'm going to kind of try to navigate this carefully. Um, I, I would I would further say, um, uh, Superintendent Barge, it's a pleasure to, to join you today. And, and these panelists, these are the experts who you'll really hear from um, in a few minutes. And um, and thanks also to to Steve and the Georgia Partnership for the opportunity to be here. Um, in, a, in a previous life, I actually lived in Atlanta. For a few years, I covered the Southeast for the Wall Street Journal, and I know how important it is for the business and education communities, uh, historically, how they've worked together to keep a constant dialogue moving on these issues. So, so that's, um, that's, that's admirable and, and historical. 
Um, it, so, you know, my perspective on all this, and I'm going to talk for about 15 minutes um, and just do uh, some broad national frame up, and then again turn it over to the, to the experts. Um, my perspective on this is really from the communications perspective. So, as a reporter, um, later as an advisor to a governor, um, and certainly as a parent, um, most of all, um, I, I have gotten from time to time frustrated trying to understand some of the information that comes out of public education, both, both at the K-12 and post-secondary level. The, you know, the messages are inconsistent sometimes, sometimes confusing, and that's nobody's fault. There's just so much information out there, and so much data that we're all trying to process in a logical kind of way. And so I just think there's real value in stepping back and helping put some of these ideas in plain English uh, for people who are looking ways for ways to engage but can't always penetrate the veil of pedagogy and metrics and value added and all these terms that kind of get you know bandied around. Um, so you know, over the years we've talked a lot about K-12, obviously, and, and, and by now, 2011, I think there's a fairly clear reform path that is emerging um, that's not at all universally accepted, but I think does have some basic, um, um, I would call, um, uh, pilings of support within both the, uh, both political parties, and, and I think you know it's the closest thing we've got right now to not a bipartisan issue, but perhaps a nonpartisan issue. And in the path, you know, these days is look looks something like um, career and college ready standards in the classroom um, that has a specific meaning, which our friends that achieved in Washington, which Georgia is familiar with uh, for a long time, uh, have been a part of shaping that discussion. Uh, honest assessments of student knowledge, you know, some people are going to call that more rigorous tests or harder tests. Um, you know, better use of student data to improve classroom instruction. A focus on teacher quality, although I would submit that we're not even close to really honestly confronting the compensation issues in, in that part. Um, and there are other things, and all of these things are embodied in Race to the Top and other big conversations that are going on. Uh, in, in, in Tennessee and Georgia and, and some of these other states, uh, we will we'll see in a few years if it pays off uh, like we, we hope so much that it will. But there's another area of, of public education that we've really kind of only begun to explore um, with a more critical lens. And I, I'll say, you know, people like Dave Spence and SREB have been doing it for a while now, and, and now uh, they, they, they are prescient. You know, it is come, this issue is moving closer and closer to the forefront. The, the higher education, college completion, post-secondary attainment um, uh, issue. And, and I think the reason it's kind of been backed up is a little, little bit is because of our focus on K-12. And, and I think there's also, there's several reasons I would, I would submit. And, and one is, I think there's been a deference over the years to college and university academic leadership. Uh, and the, the fact is, you know, our higher education system in America is still the envy of the world. Right? particularly our research universities. So that's why you've got countries that are happy to pay a premium to send students to great institutions like Georgia Tech and others. And that sort of creates this air of distinction uh, around higher ed, um, although I know there's some you know, in Congress right now who are really questioning how long we can maintain that leadership position in the world. And so research universities, that's another conversation for, for another day. But, but it, it is connected back to this to this other issue of completion um, more than, than tangentially. And I, I would say that, that one more reason, in which, which Aaron referenced, um, and, and which I, I know is a big conversation in Georgia historically, as it is in my state, is higher ed, um, there's been this fundamental belief in access, right? And so the idea that any kid in America or Georgia does uh, or she does well and does what it takes to finish high school, deserves this chance to go to college and eventually earn a good living um, for him or herself and their families. And that's a pretty central tenet you know, for us, um, the, the idea that we can all move ahead uh, in life and in, in education if that's what we want to do. Um, the, the problem is we haven't been making the changes in the system to support that overriding principle of access. So we haven't been talking enough about how to um, not only create access, but to promote and encourage success, you know, in addition to that. And, and, and now that's beginning to change nationally because of some of these uh, folks who are in these leadership positions in Georgia and, and around the country. Um, part of it obviously has to do with the fiscal pressures that the states are facing. Public institutions, like a lot of the businesses in this room, um, are obviously having to do less with more. 
less in, in terms of state appropriations, certainly. And I was reminded earlier today that this is the year that the stimulus funds run out for, for most uh, higher education institutions around the country. So that's an equal challenge. Um, you know, it's producing in a lot of places a combination of deep cuts and sometimes high, even double digit tuition increases. And, and people are kind of beginning to question, um, are we kind of getting our money's worth on, on some of these, these programs? And, and I, I would further add the other part of, of this conversation is just sort of the stark um, economic reality. Uh, the, the fact is that if we're going to stay ahead economically, then we've got to have a renewed or maybe even a new focus on degree production um, in this state and, and around the country. And, and what I'm going to do over the next few minutes is outline a very rough framework. I'm going to quote some statistics and some ideas fairly um, you know, quick pace in the next few minutes. Some of these ideas were ideas that came up originally through SREP. Um, they, so others, uh, kind of uh, Complete College America, which, which Aaron uh, references, helping advance the conversation nationally uh, through an alliance of 28 or so states, including Georgia and Tennessee and, and others. So, so, so I'm, I'm going to kind of caveat this up front. A lot of what I'm saying is coming you know, from a distillation of, of all of those conversations. Um, so where are we nationally right now? Right now, only about 40% of young adults in the country have a college degree or, or a so-called credential of value. And in Georgia, I believe that number is about 34%, according to, uh, to NGEMS, which is a national group. And when you, and when you look at degree production um, nationally, it kind of breaks down something along these lines. Uh, roughly half of students who start a four-year degree program uh, finish full-time, finish on time, rather. Um, uh, but, but on time is, is defined as six years. So, so think about that. We're measuring four-year completion rates with a six-year yardstick. And there are good reasons for that, maybe. I'll come back to them in a, in a minute, but, but, but keep that in mind. And at the community college level, you've got about three out of ten students finishing with an associate degree or, or, or what is normally a two-year degree, but they're finishing within three years. So looking ahead in the, around the country, there are projections that we need to raise that overall 40% number to more like 60% by 2020 in order to kind of get where we need to be economically. So, so to put that differently, to meet what we hope is a growing workforce demand, we hope we all hope that, we've got to dramatically increase degree production and credentials of value over the next decade. So how do you begin to close that gap if you're a state like Georgia, Tennessee, others. If, if you buy into the work that these 28 alliance states are doing right now, and I think you've got a fairly straightforward and I would argue pretty darn logical path to follow, and it sort of breaks down in four big buckets of work, right? In some states, there, there are going to be more buckets, in other states, there are going to be less, and in some states, there are going to be different buckets. But, but I've got a few slides, and when I say a few slides, I mean literally four slides um, that, that I want to help kind of frame the discussion.